Hello and welcome back. This is video number three and we're going to talk about the desire trigger. Now you might be wondering why in the world are we at a toy website for kids? Or maybe why are we going to amazon.com and looking at cool gets and gadgets? Well, I want you to think for just a moment. In the past months or maybe even the past year, I want you to think of something that you really wanted. Was it a car? Was it something mental, a relationship? What could it be? So you could even think of it from your kid's perspective. As we're looking at this website, maybe your kid wanted this Nerf toy blaster, or maybe you did when you were little. So if you think back to those days, what was it? What was it about it that you really, really wanted? Now, if you can jot that down as part of an exercise, just jot down what kind of emotions, why you wanted exactly maybe that or maybe something else. What were the emotions that you felt? And what were the desires? What were the end results? Write those down right now. Okay, so hopefully you wrote down a few emotions. The reason why I wanted you to take this little exercise is because this is really what your customers are all about. You need to think about how you can motivate them from video one, video two, video three, lesson, whatever, and motivate them by showing them that, okay, if you complete video one, you'll get here. If you complete video two, you'll get this desired result. If you complete half of this video course, you will get to this point and you'll be able to, you'll be halfway there, but you'll get this and that. So hopefully that makes sense. Basically you want to, number one, give them a quick overview of what exactly what to expect so that they know exactly what is coming. If they know exactly what is coming, then they can get excited, right? They can get excited about what's actually to come. So that's why I'm showing this to you is because it's a very similar concept of you wanting something or someone that you know wanting something. So even as adults, if we go to amazon.com and maybe we're looking at shoes, maybe we want them because uh, they will help us run better. Maybe our feet hurt or maybe they'll just make us look more stylish, right? So that's why you need to understand your students, understand what they want to achieve. Now, obviously the reason why they bought your course in the first place was because they wanted to achieve something. So just reiterating that in itself can actually be a big motivational factor or a desire trigger. Okay, so I already talked about this, but in practical terms, number one, of course, create that list and show them what to expect. And number two, simply reiterate what they want and try to, if you can, try to plug it in to the videos. So in video two, perhaps could be about something and you relate it to whatever you're trying to teach, but you also talk about it as well. So you maybe talk about that desire that they want to achieve. In video number three, you'll talk about the next step, what to do there, but also reiterate that desire. So along along, you're just reminding them why they bought the course in the first place, because they had that excitement. You want to keep it exciting so that they complete the course. Now, like for example, this course, you could take it and you could add things in between. So there's a variety of things that you can do to make it interesting. And of course, only you really would know that, but we'll give you some practical application on how to go about doing that. Now, another way to achieve this is by creating a roadmap. So you can create a mind map or a roadmap or something to show them what's ahead. Now, a lot of people tend to be visual learners or kinesthetic, so they learn better by actually seeing. So to achieve that, you will definitely need to get access to something that can help you create roadmaps. So here are a few sites that will allow you to do that. PictoChart.com is uh, one of them, and this site allows you to create infographics. And a lot of the infographics look 
really interesting and they have that kind of roadmap look. So not everyone, but some of them, and they have a ton of templates that you can pick and choose from. So if we go under here and we click on infographics, just to give you an idea of what this looks like. So this one here, for example, this is a good way to show it or camping. This is a good way to show a roadmap and what to expect. And using graphics as well can help with that. So let's just go to this one right here. And actually when I scroll down, you can see that this is a good example of a roadmap. So you can have video one, two, three, four, five, six, and give them an idea of about what to expect and how that integrates with their actual desire. Now, some of these don't necessarily look like a roadmap. So of course, steer clear of those, but the ones that do definitely want to pick those up. Now, pictochart.com is not the only place where you can find infographics. There are many other places out there. Another place is called Graphic River dot net so we can go here graphicriver.net and type in info graphic roadmap click enter and let's see what we get so the first one you can see it looks like a race car track now obviously when you pick infographics make sure that they fit your demographics in other words they fit who you're actually going to target so if this fits your course, then great, pick and choose that. So you see this way your student can actually see, okay, this is video one or step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And this is what they can expect. So some people, when they look at things, they're like, oh, I really want to learn what's in video four, but before I can get there, I have to complete three and two or, oh, I really want to look at five or four and five, but I got to complete these to get there. So creating a roadmap and allowing people to see it visually allows them to actually start to think about what is actually going to come out of that. How are they going to get closer to this desire and more? All right. So now that we've covered this, let's move on to video number four.